5 ESS removal. Daniel Lodi is in this video. The rear of two of the three lineups of the 5 ESS. The front of two of the three lineups. And the rear of what I'm going to call the third lineup of equipment. Rear of the main power distribution for the 5 ESS switch. This is what's referred to as a GPDF, Global Power Distribution Frame. The rear of the 5 ESS, we have it about 90% decabled. Rear of the switch mod controller, this is one of the most critical pieces of the switching machine. This is the administration module, which is how people talk to the machine through different networks. Then we have what's called the ONTC in the large 5E, the Office Network and Timing Complex. This is kind of like the junk or grouping frame in a 1A ESS or crossbar uh, grouping frame, junk or frame. This is a recorded announcement, which is a T1 on the output, input outputs done on T1. And then the, the announcements for the switch was recorded here. Directly above it is a dial tone delay unit. And this is what was used in the number 1A ESS office. And they also put these in some 5 ESS machines. This is really at the very, very end of the Western Electric era when it came to the, um, that type of technology. This is the switch mod controller. This is a particular one is switch mod number one. This one had trunks, ISDN, and of course all of the peripheral equipment. The administration module would be connected to this as well as other types of one-off items. We have Dylan here, and this is his uh, switching machine. He has actually really scored exceptionally well. He has a, about a 5,000 line 5 ESS switch. There are 17 cabinets. Uh, this is where we have boxed up all of the spare cards that were not in the switching machine when it was turned down. And there's also a lot of peripheral stuff in here. There's documentation books, the circuit packs. Uh, and then, of course, there's a huge pile of cable in the rear, and there's more cable in the rear. And he also has a lot of stuff that was uh, given to him that's brand new, never been opened. Like a simplified message service interface. It's kind of cool. So there's a lot of really neat things here in this, and he will have a multi-week process or job to actually process everything that is this is how gte would normally install their switches however this is what it looks like is we're in the process of disconnecting the cables these cables are connectorized at both ends so we've unplugged the cable at one end and then we will roll this up and uh, make a coil on the back of the bay at this point, the cables are different lengths due to the way we had to trace them out, but it'll be a lot neater when we are done. Front view of the switch mod number two with the time slot interchangers and the switch mod processor units down below. Here's the rear of the switch with the doors removed, some of the cables hanging off, and the stuff that we are tie wrapping on the rear of the switch. The overhead, which we've mined most of the cable out and disassembled some of that, this will be taken down very soon. The telephone company that we're in requested that we did not take pictures of the mainframe or any of the other equipment, so this is the only stuff I'm allowed to make a video of.
This is the room that the 5E machine was sitting in. As you can tell on the floor, that is the footprint of the machine. It was powered by a Lucent Lineage 2000 power plant that is still operating the phone company today. We have an electrical engineer that is doing mechanical physical work instead of drawing lines and paper. Joe was one of the wonderful people to help. We have a truck with the entire 5ESS central office loaded onto it.